Hello YouTube. I just picked up this vintage collection of pencils. It came in today and I couldn't wait to share it with you. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Okay, as you can see, the cover here says Vintage Collection, Viarco, since 1907, and, ah, there's something on the back, more of the same, and then it says, Uma Colegial Limitada, well, I can't read that. This limited edition collection is wholly designed in Portugal using long established production methods. So this collection is from Portugal. Let's get right into opening this thing and taking a look at what I got. It's a nice box. Do that. Yep. Okay. That comes out. Yeah, that comes out. Okay, we have this thin paper that was in there. And I guess that maybe that's Portuguese perhaps, because it's from Portugal. But here's English. It says, in pencil writing, there is a name that transcends borders since 1907. In Portugal, the Viarco brand is intertwined with the history of pencils. Globally, the brand is reputed for its versatility. High quality products leave the small factory unit, one of the few still active in Europe, daily. These products are made using traditional methods and tools just as they were in the early 20th century. These packages are a faithful version of the many used by Viarco between 1940 and 1960, brought back to life it's alive. to tell the story of the flagship brand that views simplicity as a representation of its identity and collective memory. This limited edition collection is wholly designed in Portugal using long established production methods. Come get to know what is probably the smallest pencil factory in the world. And there's the website if you want to go visit there. Oh, that's pretty. These are pretty cool looking boxes here. There are six total. I'm going to move this box off to the side. Alright, well there they are. These six boxes all came within that collection. So, where does one start? It's called the by Arca 1950. I have one here called the 1951. This one here is the 3500. This one, perhaps it's color pencils, that's at least what it shows here. We'll look at that in a second. This one is 2000, it says 2000, it's a number two pencil. And then we have the 3000. It's a number two pencil. Huh, 
Well, let's try these out one at a time. I guess we can start with this 1951 here. Wow, that's pretty. They all look like graphite. There's 12 pre-sharpened. And they all say the same thing it looks like. That their number two pencil, Super Decenho, Decenho. I don't know what that means. Guess I could Google it in the translator. And find out what that means. But as you can see, it's a pretty green pencil with white stripes. Then we have other colors here. It's kind of a purplish looking color here. Same exact writing. There's no difference in the writing. It's all the same. 1951 by Arco. They all look like they're graphite. Here's a, here's a blue. And I see a yellow. Black. And then we have a red, and then this, oh wait a minute, look at this. This thing actually folds to get to your, you can get to the pencils a little easier there I guess. And the pencils that are underneath are simply duplicates of the pencils that are on top. So you get two of each. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of these. I guess I'll take this green one here and get some paper. I need a smooth surface underneath. So I'm going to put that right there. Okay. Let's see how it writes. I'm very curious. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to have to tilt this to the right. I apologize. But you have to read it in an angle. Okay. This is the Biarco 1951. Hmm. Super Decenho. Descent Ho. You probably can't see that because it's very bright in here right now. Okay, it seems to write really nice. Okay, it's a it's a number two pencil. Okay, it well, it writes fine. I mean it's you know it's it's not spectacular. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a better tip than this little dinky thing that it came pre-sharp and I'll just use my uh, Coom long point sharpener here. Excuse the, it's a piece of gum there and there that I use for blending with the Q-tip there. Trust me that did not go in my ear. You know, Don't want to freak you people out. Looks like a brain, a little brain, don't you think? Oh, getting on my pencil. Alright. By the way, I'm going to auction off that you know, on eBay. Can I get a bid? Alright. Okay. So, here are my impressions of this pencil so far. Um, I just sharpened this and as you can see the wood kind of gets a little ratted. You can see it just, it just kind of gets chewed up and then it exposed a whole bunch of the core because it just kind of ripped the, it ripped the wood out. I don't 
I don't find that to be um, a good thing for a pencil um, for the woodstock to to just get chewed up like that. I'm going to try a different sharpener, perhaps the Mitsubishi in a moment, with a different pencil just to see if I can uh, get one that has a better, you know, long point on it. But let me test this out again. All right. This is the Barco nineteen fifty one Super D E S E N H O All right, and so that writes pretty smooth. It feels pretty good. So that's a it's a nice pencil. It feels okay in the hand. It's, it's a little on the light side, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sharpen another one just before I put this box away and we move on to something else. This time I'll just use the Mitsubishi KH20 here and see if I still have the chinzy looking wood. Alright. Okay, now that, that gave me a nicer, nicer shave. You can see that in this case here that came out nice so the sharpener made a big difference here on this particular pencil so and I imagine it's going to write all the same they're just different colors okay so testing okay one two three okay If you press down on it, you can get pretty decent, pretty decent tonal value from that. So it's a good pencil. I'm going to go ahead and put that away. That was the 1951. Hmm. So. How might that um, compare to the 1950? Well, let's check that out. This one has a different kind of box. It opens up like this. So you can't actually see them all without pulling the whole thing out. Let's see what we have here. Okay, now they're all the same color, the 1951s. So I'll go ahead and pull one out. All right, and there you go. Okay, so this basically says the same thing, except it says 1950 right there. And these are all yellow. They're just basic yellow number two pencil. this right by the way I'll let you see the, the point on there okay that came out fine okay so this is the by our co 1950 doesn't say super it just says the same thing here as far as the D E S C -E N and that's not an N. H O. There you go. It's a number two. Okay. And it basically writes like 
you know, a decent number two pencil. It's good. Good pencil. I don't see it being any darker or any lighter than the um, other one. It's pretty much the same to me. Okay. So far, these pencils are all pretty generic. There's number twos. They've just got interesting looks to them. They come in very neat looking boxes. Now here's one which is called the 3000. And this is a slide box, I believe. Let's see if I could slide this out. There we go. It's starting to slide out. A little stubborn, but... Ooh, look at that pretty. Now see these... are also different colors. And... But they're all the same pencils. So these different types of pencils, and I guess the ones on the bottom are they're duplicates of ones on the top, so there's two of each. And they also put them in the box in opposing directions. But these uh these have a very interesting shine like a metallic paint job to each one of these. And it has the yellow tips with the black band. And they all say the same thing right here. Now this is also a number two pencil. It says number two, but it's 3,000. So the difference between these pencils appear to be the paint jobs. Let's see. I'm sure the graphite's going to write the same. I'm just going to go ahead and write with it with the point that it provides rather than sharpening it over again. So let me just zoom up. So this is the Viarco 3000. Okay. Um, this says it's a number two. This is interesting. I'm, I'm going to have to sharpen this because I'm getting a different sensation from this this pencil. <laughs> Because if so far they're all number twos, but this one feels smoother and darker. So let's see. It feels, yeah, still good. Feels very smooth. It's got a nice, it's got a nice dark tonal value wow it's a soft soft pencil glides well I just messed that up anyway I love this one Okay. This pencil, not only does it have these really, really cool metallic shine colors to them, as you can, as you can see in this box here, but they write, they write so smooth. Uh, how would I compare this? I'd have to compare it to the, the pencils. Um, wow, you know, like, um, gosh, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, it could, it could be as smooth as a black wing for that matter. Let me pull out one of my um, black wings here, the 602. Let me see if I can get a comparison going here between these two pencils. This should be interesting. Okay, so this one here is the Viarco 
3000, number 2, and this is the black wing, okay, 602, now I'm going to write black wing with this one, I'm going to write black wing with this one. Okay, the black wing's a little smoother. I can tell it's more a little more buttery. But wow, this is really close. It is close, very close for a number two pencil. I'm I'm very impressed. They seem to be the same darkness. And it's just it's just hard to tell, you know, but it's very soft it's a very soft pencil. I'm I am really impressed. So I like this one, the the 3000 number 2. This so far those three boxes, this this one here is is going to be a real treat for me to use because I favor the smoother pencils and this one happens to be a smoother pencil. So great. And I just try to get that thing put back in the box. It's not as easy to put these back in the box, apparently. There we go. But that, that was really a surprise. I'm, I'm really pleasantly surprised about that. All right, next I have the 2000. And it is a number two. These are all apparently number twos, except for those color pencils. Well, let's see what the 2000 does here. Okay, now this is interesting too. The 2000s are also has that metallic shiny stuff, except they're instead of being round, like those 3000s were perfectly round, these are semi hex. So let me just pull one out of here. I love the way that this box folds down, and lets you get a pencil out really easy. That is just great. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and try writing with this, and uh, I know sharpening don't make a difference as far as how it feels, so I won't sharpen it. But you can see that it has that really shiny paint job like the other ones, but it is also a semi-hex. It has these rounded um, ridges. Okay, so this one here is the Viarco 2000. Okay, now we're back to earth again with a 2000 num with a number 2 pencil. It feels like a like a regular It's a regular smooth number 2. So it feels okay. It's not as dark as that 3000. But it is a very good pencil. I'm I'll be very happy to use it. It's a very good pencil. I think it's perhaps a slightly softer than those first two that I did, the, the 1950 and the 1951. I think weren't, <clears throat> weren't quite as smooth and dark as this one. But it's a very good pencil. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and sharpen it anyway. Just to make sure. Okay, so that came out good. <clears throat> so this one here. My throat's getting a little dry here. The Vi... Viarco 2000 number two <clears throat> broke my tip okay so there you go um, yeah it's a good pencil I mean it's it's not as good as the number the three thousands that I fell in love with but uh, I think it's pretty and they got all those cool colors 
that's really good. So put that back in and we'll move on <coughs> to the next one. This one's the color pencils, at least it looks like that's what they are, color pencils. Well, we'll see here in a second. Okay, this is interesting. <clears throat> they're all they're all purple looking. They say they say uh 272D Viarco Copia Violetta Duro. And all 12 of them are the same color on the outside. So I'm not quite sure why they're showing color pencils on there. Hmm. But I'm going to sharpen this. This this has no no point on either end. So let's let's try to see how how this thing turns out. Okay. All right. Well, that's what the point looks like. They look like they're purple. So, is this purple? Yeah, this is a, and I just broke my tip. This is a purple pencil. So it is a color pencil. It's just not very smooth. It's kind of, you know, kind of drag. So it's kind of, it's like, like trying to draw with wax. Why in the world would anybody want a whole box of purple pencils? That is that is odd. But I think these are all these are all purple. I got a whole box of purple pencils. What in the world am I gonna do with purple pencils? Yeah, they're all purple. Every one of them's purple. I got 12 purple, 12 purple pencils. Are you kidding me? <laughs> 12 purple pencils. Oh, okay. Well, it's kind of weird. 12 purple pencils, sheesh. There's nothing on the box. I don't think that even tells me, tells me what it is. Figure out how to put this away. Twelve purple pencils. Huh. Well, that's strange. I find that to be very odd. A whole box of purple pencils. That was a waste. Okay. Now we have the 3500s. Now so far I've noticed that the 2000s felt a little bit better then the 1915-51s and the 3000s were the absolute fantastic best. So maybe the 3500s will be like the total awesomeness of all these pencils. I don't know. Let's find out. Well, and they're all this interesting looking red with these, I don't know, is that white stripe looking kind of a candy cane Thing. I'm not sure. Maybe those are yellow. Can't tell if that's a white or a yellow line. Doesn't look like a bright white to me. But anyway, could be the lighting. I'm just curious on how it writes. I'm going to sharpen it. And we'll see. this out. These pencils out of the way. This is 
the 3500 hmm it is smooth it's got good it's got good tonal value Okay, so this is a nice writing pencil. Okay. Um, impressions? Well, how does it feel compared to the 3500 you might be wanting, or the 3000? I'm going to go grab this 3000 again. I can get it out of the box. I seem to have problems getting in and out of this box. It's just bolting. Okay, let me get that pencil out. Let me compare these two. I need a new point on here. the the, the 3000 again so this is oh boy that's that's just that's just smooth that's just so smooth this is a round pencil okay and then this it is the 3500 and you should be able to see right off the bat there's a difference too. This is a lighter, lighter pencil. The 3500 and the 3000 is, I believe, a darker pencil. Yep. The 3000 is the winner for me. So far, all these. And since that was the last box... And I would have to say that the 3000 is definitely this. This is a box. This is a box of awesomeness right here. These 3000s. And so, if I can, if I can just get these alone. Once I use these up, I'll be happy with that. The rest of these are okay. It'd be nice to give them out as gifts or whatever. Um, Nothing really major or special. Not like those 3000s. Those were special. As far as those purple pencils, I'm going to have to find out if that was not a mistake. Because that just seemed a little odd to me. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these all back in the box that they came in. All right. I hope you like this review of the Viarco pencils. If so, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Leave comments below. Tell me what you think about these. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Hello. You're still here? Okay, well good. That's a good thing because... I found out what those purple pencils are all about. So I might as well share that with you since you've decided to hang around a little bit longer. It appears that these so-called purple pencils, that I call them purple pencils, that I thought it was, a, was supposed to be a box of colored pencils, these are called copying pencils. And I guess they were more in use some years back uh, but maybe not as much today. Perhaps a little more in Europe than here. I don't know. Maybe you can leave comments below if you happen to know. But these copy pencils were meant to, to write information that was to be permanent. You see, this, this is graphite mixed with a dye. And this allows this to to write like a pencil somewhat but the information you write is not meant to be erased but it's meant to be permanent 
and it had multiple uses. Now I'm going to go ahead and just write something here. This is a copy pencil. Okay, and I'm going to just zoom in here a little bit. Now, what they would do, there are several things you can do with this. Number one, for example, is that uh, you can write something down like this, and then you could take some of that tissue paper, you know, that really thin paper you can see through, and you get it moist, and then you lay it on top of this, and then you would put it in a press, and they would have a press, I guess, that would pressure down, and then when it, you can pull the tissue paper off, and it would transfer the wording to that tissue paper, and therefore you would be able to you know, read that information. Uh, I guess there's a term for that. They call it, um, let's see, what is it? Inverso. So they call it verso. Which basically means that you can, you can, you're reading something that has the writing on the back side of the paper instead of on the front side like this. Now, apparently, way back, 100 years ago, um, that these things can cause you uh, some serious health problems due to the dye that's in these pencils. Uh, it was mentioning that uh, you can end up with, you know, acne and psoriasis and you know, carcinoma and, you know, some nasty things. So I would imagine, though, that the formula has been somewhat changed since then. Um, because what they would do is they'd actually lick this pencil and then it would it would you'd be able to write like with purple um, you know like you had purple ink now I'm not going to lick this just in case but I happen to have a little water here okay so I'm going to just dip this into some water see how it writes see how it writes. Well, it doesn't it doesn't last very long with the water part. I guess you'd have to you have to be doing a lot of dipping. Oh. It's actually starting to work a whole lot better the more I dip. Oh, look at this. Wow. Nice. Inky. Inky writing. So I guess you have to do a lot of licking here. To... But there you go. That's what you use this for. You can make this this ink thing. Now this this predates the ballpoint pen, so this was the way that they would write, uh, you know, permanently. Now they had the fountain pen way back then, but like if you you were writing uh, uh, like an address on a package that's wrapped in kind of a a, a leather wrapping. Well, the fountain pen would snag on the leather material. So they would use these to write the addresses down and so forth on the leather. As opposed to using those um, fountain pens. So it was favored for that. Or when they were using copying paper, you know, that really thin purplish copy paper. Well you really couldn't press very hard using a fountain pen to to get a, a, a copy and so this was really good because you'd want the original of course to be permanent and you want your copy so you're able to press down a lot harder with a pencil than you can with a fountain pen on the um, copying paper permanent Okay, well see, there you go.
So it's not a coloring pencil by any means, but it is a copying pencil. And you can look it up on Wikipedia if you want more information on these pencils. But it's got an interesting history to it. So anyway, there you go for your bonus material. And I hope you like that. And I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.